What is up guys? Today we're gonna to be upgrading the controller on my Talaria XXX to prepare this thing to make more power. We have to install this first before we can install the 74 volt battery, which I already have on order through Charge Cycle Works. Let's go see what's in this package from Nuclear. That is pretty slick packaging. Look at that. That is beautiful. This looks like it would be the display. That is pretty impressive packaging. Oh, these must be the adapters for the side of the controller to mount it onto the frame. It's like a 3D printed finish. Okay, so we got the controller itself. This is the Nuclear P24F. The adapters to mount it on the frame. The display. The harness and some extra hardware tools and some extra connectors. This is the top cap adapter to mount the display and harness adapters. I want to start by disconnecting the battery before we start messing with the electronics. So I'm going to put the Talaria on a bike stand and disconnect the rear suspension and pull the battery out. The bolt for the bottom of the rear shock takes a six millimeter Allen and a 13 millimeter for the nut. Wow, I really need to clean this bike. Pop the cover off. I'm gonna release these two levers. <clears throat> you pull the levers out and then you start turning them counterclockwise once you release the tension. Just like that, you have access to the battery. This is actually my first time taking a peek at this battery. I haven't had a reason to disconnect it. You just press down on the red portion of the top clip and you wiggle it out. I'm not gonna pull the battery out. I just wanna disconnect it for the install. So I'm just gonna leave this hanging. I'm just gonna leave the cover somewhat closed and reinstall the rear suspension. We're gonna set this back down on the ground. Next, we're gonna be removing the skid plate, the cover for the horn, and the front fender. Removing the fender is not necessary, but it does make it easier to access the hardware for the horn cover. And I kinda of wanna leave the fender off just to make the bike look a little bit more inconspicuous. I think it looks a little too much like a dirt bike. The skid plate is only held on by four Allen bolts and they are three millimeters. Yeah, I definitely need to clean my bike. Now we're gonna remove the factory controller which is held on by four four millimeter Allen bolts. Yeah. It looks like that one bolt was actually cross threaded from factory. All right, next we're just gonna unplug these three wire connectors and then unplug the three phase wires, negative battery cable and positive battery cable. All the phase wires and battery cables are held on by five millimeter Allen bolts. Do not use an impact driver to tighten the bolts on the controller wire. Stuff. And that is how you remove the factory controller. So I'm gonna start with installing the brackets on the side, which requires us to install the 10 millimeter nut ahead of time. The end of the bracket that has the angled edge goes on the side of the controller that has the same matching edge. Okay. 
The four bolts that go through the controller are four millimeter Allen and the nut that's provided in the kit is a 10 millimeter. Next, I'm gonna install the three harness adapters. First one's gonna be the hall sensor connector. The controller is labeled, so you can't really mess this up. It says hall right there and on the harness itself. Next one we're gonna put on is for the throttle. It should be this spot right here, throttle and brake. Just like that. Third one we're gonna install is for the input. You wanna hear a snap when you plug them in. That just makes sure that it's fully seated. And then the last plug that we're gonna install on the controller is gonna be for the CAN bus, for the display. We're gonna do that when we have it on the bike, but we are gonna install the side of the harness that goes on the back side of the display now. It's gonna remove these five screws holding the back cover on. The two longer screws are for the top corners. Then we're gonna plug the CAN cable, the far left port. Once you have it fully seated, just reinstall the cover. Nuclear also provided these two covers. These are for the battery cables and for the phase wires. We're gonna put these on once we have everything hooked up on the bike. If you want more information about this controller, I'll have the user manual, the pinout, and a link on where to get your nuclear controller in the description below. Next thing we're gonna install is the display, which is gonna be mounted right where the factory top cap is. We're gonna be replacing this with the bracket that's included. We're gonna loosen the top side bolt on the stem. Insert the included bracket. And I'm not gonna snug this down quite yet. I wanna make sure that it is perfectly straight before I do that. But I am gonna install the Allen bolt that's included with the kit. Replaces the original bolt for the top cap. Now we're gonna use the three millimeter Allen bolt that was included with the kit. The mount's designed very similar to a GoPro. One side of the mount is threaded. I'm gonna have mine mounted super flat. I just think that reduces the chances of it breaking if I end up looping the bike. Now that I've confirmed that the display is perfectly square with the handlebars, I'm gonna tighten the top bolt on the stem. The next step is to tuck this wiring, which I'm likely gonna route on the front side of the fork behind the headlight and come out this way. I'm gonna cut this zip tie and I'm gonna route it with the factory harness. Now when you're going to hook up the cables onto the nuclear controller, make sure you use the new hardware that came with the kit. It is ever so slightly shorter than the original bolts. I'm gonna take all these covers off the face wires and the battery cables. Since they're not gonna fit under the plastic covers that's provided with the controller and they're not even water resistant anyway. I'm gonna start with the three phase wires. You can't really mess this up either since the controller is labeled UVW and so are the cables. Now that we have the three phase wires mounted, I'm going to install the cover. Next, I'm going to hook up the CAN bus cable for the display. and all the other cables. You also can't mix this up since you can only hook it up one way. All three connectors are different. Mm -hmm. 
Last two cables that we got to hook up are going to be for the battery. So we're going to do the ground first and then the positive cable. Last thing to install before we mount the controller is the cover for the battery cables. Carefully tuck everything into place. You kind of have to fish out the 10 millimeter nuts that are inside the controller adapters to get the threads to catch. Now we're gonna reinstall the horn cover and the skid plate. And here's how it looks like installed. It looks almost factory with the black finish. Now we're gonna put the bike back on the stand and hook up the battery. While we got the rear wheel off the ground, we're gonna program the controller. Just turn it on as normal. Use RFID, make sure you see this Telaria turn on. And then we're gonna to go to the left button, scroll down to devices, select P24F, scroll down to auto setup, scroll down to full setup, switch that to on. Then we're gonna follow the instructions on the screen. Press the brake, release, throttle, release. We're just gonna let this thing keep calibrating. Once it's all finished initializing, we're gonna go back to the previous menu, scroll up to save settings, switch that to on, and that saves these settings that we just did. Now we're gonna go back to the main menu and to mode switch, you're gonna see your mode one right now. It's start, you just press that, go to one, two, and three. Let's go with the first one. Caps off at 35 kilometers an hour. Mode two caps off at 61. And mode three caps off at 98 kilometers an hour. So for now, we're still running the stock battery, which means it shouldn't make that much more power, but it does give us quite a bit of adjustment and extra features. I'm just gonna show you a couple of them. You now have the option of running three different modes and adjusting the power output and the overall speed on all three settings. You can also change the throttle curve there are five different throttle mode settings. Speed, speed plus torque, torque, power plus torque, and power. And when I click power, this thing is insane. That is a freaking animal. Though I'm not sure if that has the highest top speed. Hopefully we can figure out how to change it from kilometers to miles per hour. Hmm. If you happen to know how to change the speedometer from kilometers to miles per hour, please comment below. All right, guys, we got the upgraded controller installed on the XXX. I'm excited to see what kind of changes it makes to the driving characteristics and to see if there's actually torque differences in those different throttle settings. I'm also curious to see what my new top speed is in miles per hour. 
uh, and see how accurate the speedometer actually is. I'm gonna measure it with the Site Plus GPS-based speedometer. So stay tuned if you wanna see that initial test ride with the stock 60 volt battery. I'm super curious to see what it's gonna do with the 74 volt battery upgrade. So I can't wait for that to come in. But if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with the Talaria project or any of my other bikes, subscribe to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.